Hey guys, well, oh my god, what the hell was that? Hey guys, what's up, Philip here. Today, we're in the Big Apple, we're in New York, Manhattan, and I figured we'd do a little rooftop filming. I wanted to make a rooftop video, so excuse my voice, my voice is absolutely gone. It's not because I was staying out till 3 a.m. for multiple nights straight, that's not what happened. So yeah, moving on anyway, I wanted to make a video on why I quit caffeine. I cut out coffee for 30 days straight and I kind of wanted to just give you a little video and explain my experience, tell you about why I decided to cut caffeine out of my life, why you should stop drinking coffee at least every day, what my experience was like when I actually quit caffeine and what the withdrawal symptoms were like and how I adjusted to caffeine. Then on the other hand, explaining some of the benefits of coffee and caffeine and why you might want to actually use caffeine in your daily life. And then finally, how to properly reintroduce it into your life after you've gone through all the withdrawals and then you're kind of back to baseline. How are you gonna reintroduce caffeine and coffee into your life responsibly? So yeah, let's get into the video. So why did I decide to stop drinking coffee or really using caffeine products for that matter? Uh, well, the main reason was I just kind of realized how hooked I was. I was relying on coffee for pretty much any and every kind of motivation that I needed throughout my day. Whether it was working out, working, going out, I just needed a hit of caffeine at every single moment of the day. and. I kind of realized that I was a drug addict in the truest sense of the word. I mean, caffeine at the end of the day is a drug and it's just used and abused in society very openly. It's very socially acceptable to use this drug and even abuse it and people make jokes about how much coffee they drink on a regular basis and so you don't really see the insidious side of the addiction. After I kind of started to realize just how addicted I was, I began to think back kind of when I wasn't addicted, what my caffeine tolerance was when I first started drinking coffee. I had an extremely low tolerance. When I first started drinking coffee in undergrad, this was during my pre-med classes and I needed extra productivity, I needed to stay up later, so I decided to start drinking coffee and even two, three sips of just an Americano or a cold brew or a quad shot espresso latte with half a pump of vanilla. No, I'm just just kidding. Uh, I just drink black coffee, but just a few sips of coffee would kind of get me going and wired for several hours. And so now I was at the point where I was at least having a cup a day, if not two, and on hard days, even maybe three. So that was adding up to maybe like 400 milligrams a day. And I realized I was kind of being a little hypocritical in a sense, because I really don't like to use pre-workout products. Pre-workout products not only have caffeine, but just the whole idea of needing to stimulate yourself, to need to work out. It just seems kind of unhealthy. And it isn't necessarily building your mental fortitude and your ability to motivate yourself when you're requiring a stimulant, a product to get you going to work out. It almost seems counterintuitive and counterproductive that you're not really getting healthier, at least in some senses, you're hurting your health by working out. So I've never really liked to take pre-workouts for that reason and I kind of realized that I was just taking caffeine or drinking coffee, which is the ultimate pre-workout but in just my everyday life. Anytime I wanted to do anything serious that required any kind of cognitive capability or any serious energy, I needed to have some caffeine. So I decided to hit the reset button. I decided to quit coffee completely for 30 days and just kind of get myself back to baseline and quit this drug that is just so socially acceptable to be addicted to. So why should you personally decide to quit coffee? Why am I making a video on why I decided to quit coffee? Well, because through my experience, I really feel and I figured out that I feel like you could benefit from also cutting out coffee from your life or caffeine, whether it be an energy drink or any kind of serious caffeine product. I don't really think tea falls into that realm because tea is really not that high in caffeine and it also doesn't give you this big rush of caffeine. There's compounds within tea specifically that actually help it release the caffeine slower into your bloodstream so you don't have this rush of energy just like coffee gives you. So first, I really don't think it's good to be addicted to pretty much any drug. Your body should have a natural baseline. You should be able to function at your natural baseline without any stimulants. So just for that reason alone, just from a kind of intuitive perspective, I think being addicted to a drug is bad and 
I think most of the time, most people would be able to agree on that. But if that isn't enough to convince you, it's also not good for your health to be addicted to coffee. And I'll explain a little bit why. So caffeine is a stimulant and the main mechanism of action by which it works is antagonizing your adenosine receptors. All that means is that it blocks your adenosine receptors and prevents them from working and your adenosine receptors are inhibitory. So when your adenosine receptors are working and there's a compound that is stimulating those receptors, you're gonna get very tired. So when you block those receptors, you feel the wakefulness, you feel the energy and the sympathetic drive that you get when you take any kind of caffeine. So the problem with chronically using coffee and caffeine in general is that when you start to get addicted, your body just begins to try to revert back to its baseline, its set point. And that's why coffee starts to lose its potency. So what happens when you start using caffeine or coffee or any kind of caffeine products on a regular basis is that your body or your brain specifically upregulates your adenosine receptors. Now upregulating, all that means is that your body produces more of your adenosine receptors because it's trying to return back to homeostasis or your normal set point. So before you were addicted to coffee, your body had its natural energy level. It had normal levels of adenosine receptors, normal levels of dopamine, serotonin receptors, all these excitatory and inhibitory receptors. So when you start taking coffee, caffeine, or any real drug, you're thrown out of homeostasis and then your body begins to adapt. So as you begin to use caffeine over time, your body is going to upregulate your adenosine receptors, meaning that you're going to have more receptors that aren't going to be inhibited by the same amount of coffee. So before, if you had a cup of coffee and it saturated and inhibited 50% of your adenosine receptors, and then two weeks later or a month later or three months later, as you've built up your tolerance, the same amount of coffee will only saturate maybe 25% of those receptors because you have more receptors. And again, the function of these adenosine receptors is to be inhibitory and kind of reduce your energy levels. So over time, as you continue to use coffee on a regular basis, you begin to accumulate more and more and more adenosine receptors so that when you're without your coffee you're going to be in this extremely inhibitory state you're going to be so much more tired than you normally would and you won't really have natural energy ever it's going to either be a peak or a trough and you'll never just be in this kind of middle zone where you're functioning off of your natural energy and you won't need to be stimulated now the problem with constantly needing stimulants is that it interacts or plays off of what is known as your sympathetic nervous system your sympathetic nervous system is kind of the fight or flight nervous system that's responsible for large amounts of wakefulness, kind of when you're exercising or when you're in a stressful event, your sympathetic nervous system is firing. And while it's important and not bad to have sympathetic activity in an acute or short period of time, having a chronically active sympathetic nervous system is actually very bad for your health. It elevates your cortisol levels, your HDL levels, your fatty acid or lipid profiles within your blood. And this contributes to pretty much every single negative risk factor out there that kills the majority of Americans or people in the world. From heart disease to diabetes to metabolic syndrome to stroke risk, atherosclerosis. So pretty much all of these things that are increased by chronically high levels of cortisol that are induced by this sympathetic drive are really just negative and gonna be induced by being addicted to caffeine. An additional little caveat to this increased sympathetic drive is that it also interferes with your sleep and your circadian rhythms. We all know how important sleep is for our health. We don't get enough. And so using caffeine to reduce the amount of sleep that you're getting already has some obvious repercussions on your health. Sleep is extremely important for your neuronal regeneration, your blood profile, everything I just kind of discussed. And so when you're taking a stimulant to reduce the amount of sleep that you're getting, you're inherently going to be taking something or living an unhealthy lifestyle. So I hope that was a slightly convincing argument as to why you might want to cut back on your caffeine intake and kind of restore your normal baseline level of tolerance. Now on to what my experience was like when I was quitting. The first two weeks were honestly hell. I 
saw severe reductions in my motivation, my productivity, my quality of sleep, and really just my quality of life. These are all things that I was using caffeine to kind of regulate, so when I cut out caffeine, my body was kind of put in this shock because caffeine increases the vasoconstriction within your body, and so when you don't have this chronic vasoconstriction, you're brain and your blood vessels in your brain are kind of wider and so there's more blood rushing to your brain and that's how you get a pressure migraine and so it really took a lot of time it really took those first two weeks of me being very diligent and not caving to quit coffee and caffeine completely the next two weeks I still wasn't kind of in the clear completely but it was definitely much better than what it used to be so now about a month removed from cutting out coffee I feel much better my natural energy levels are way higher I wake up in the morning I feel good I can get out for a run and I can really just be productive on my baseline now on to some alternatives to coffee energy drinks and caffeine pills Things like tea can be very beneficial, especially if you can't just go cold turkey and you need to wean yourself off. Teas can have up to a fifth of the amount of caffeine that some coffee products can have. I think green tea might have 30 milligrams or so, black tea might have about 50 milligrams, and white tea can have up to 60 milligrams of caffeine, which really isn't that much when you compare it to some of these coffee products out there, which can have 200, 400 milligrams of caffeine. So if you're really trying to wean yourself off, then tea can be a very good tool that you can use. In addition to that, there's various nootropics, so that if you need to be a little more focused throughout the day, there's other things that you can take, other products that can increase your productivity. Things like tyrosine, racetams, alpha GPC, L-theanine, and the list goes on and on. I'm honestly not a huge nootropic expert, but there's a lot of products that you can take out there, and I'm going to be making future videos on some of these things that can increase your productivity using a different pathway so that you're not antagonizing these adenosine receptors and you're using different receptors to actually increase your productivity. So moving on to some of the benefits of caffeine products or larger doses of caffeine, I've been ragging on using caffeine chronically, but in an acute sense, I think it has its place and it can be immensely beneficial. I'm quite literally a better person when I'm highly caffeinated. I'm focused, I'm energized, I'm productive, I feel great, but that's not something that's sustainable. But when I need to work very hard, when I have a test coming up, or when I have to get a really long day in, then caffeine can be extremely beneficial. You're gonna be more productive. It's not just a factor of can you will yourself to do something. When you drink caffeine and you take some nootropics or you modify the chemical balance in your brain, you're going to be a better person for that short period of time. But again, with every peak, there is a trough. So it's necessary to recognize that and not abuse these products. Also, caffeine can be really good when you need to reset your sleep cycles. If you just have an absolutely obliterated sleep cycle from going out and staying out till 3 a.m. every night, then you can use some coffee to help you push through the day and then go to sleep at night at a reasonable hour. And then finally, coffee is an amazing laxative. If you really need to use the bathroom, caffeine does help as a motility agent and it helps with movements of the gastrointestinal system. Now finally, last point really quick, how should you go about reintroducing caffeine into your life? I think keeping it to an every other day schedule at most is great. If you can do two to three times a week, I think that would be very ideal. And after you've reset your tolerance, if you're drinking coffee two to three times a week, you're not going to build a very large tolerance to coffee or caffeine at all. And it'll take a long time to actually build your tolerance back, even if you do. So I'd highly recommend limiting it to at most every other day. Two days a week is ideal. But yeah, just do what kind of works for you at the end of the day. If you're very busy, if you have a stressful time in your life, take more coffee and then cycle off. I mean, there's a myriad of ways in which you can go about it, but make sure you're recognizing when you have an addiction and then live your life according to that. So that's all I have for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this outdoor view that we got going on in the Big Apple NYC. I hope this wind noise isn't coming in too hard, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.